Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Ellen and welcome to A Repot with me. And a little bit of a life update. Before we start, a special thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Squarespace is your all-in-one solution to build and run your online brand, but more on that later in the video. Right, I know the last video was not, it was, it was chaos, let's be honest, it was chaos. And this is essentially the video that I wanted to do last week, but we're doing it now. So I'm going to take you through what is going on today. I have three plants to sort out, should we say, in this video. They are all Maranta. I have all three Maranta here. I have this boy, which is ridiculous. I'll talk a little bit about him in a moment. I have my lemon lime Maranta and I have Gus. And I guess we'll get to Gus when we get to him because he's not looking the best, but he's fine. Okay, he's fine. Today's video is essentially prep for my studio sort of rearranged that I'm going to be doing in maybe a couple of weeks or so. So what I need to do is get all the plants ready to do that. This guy doesn't really need too much doing. He probably just needs a bit of a trim because he has a lot of crispy leaves. Now, I'm here a lot more at the shop these days, but there was a period of time where I wasn't and I would be here once every maybe week and a half. So not enough to make sure that my plants didn't get essentially underwatered or anything else. So a lot of the plants that are up in the studio aren't the best they could be, I'm going to be honest. Some of them are crispy, some of them are just just not doing the best. So today we're going to give him a little bit of a trim. I'm going to check him, but I don't think I need to repot him. So I want to start with him because I've been putting pictures of him on Instagram because he's amazing. And I want to show you how big these leaves are because I'm going to touch them with my actual hands. That's my hand there. Yes, I have um, a finger that's missing nail polish, actually, as it happens. That's how big these leaves are. They're really, really big. Can I do a head test without getting my mic? Can you see how big these leaves are? They're pretty big, I'm not gonna lie. Let's put them down really carefully. So yeah, I'm probably not gonna do too much with them. I'm just gonna trim them. Now you might not see me trimming much, but if I just tilt him a little bit, there is a lot of water in there. You can see some crisping. So it's gonna be very, very chill. Very, very chill indeed. And we're just gonna crack on with a little bit of a life update. Just some little bits and bobs, I suppose, because why not? The next video I do, it will still be plant to prep for the studio, but I've picked out some plants from my shop. I'm gonna plant them up and then we're gonna do the usual Q&A that I normally do in my repots. And we're gonna prepare all these lovely plants for my studio refurb, because I can't do it until everything's potted up. And I have a lot to pot up before we start, because I know I'm gonna get questions the wall. I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to move him on the floor temporarily so you can see a little bit more of the wall because I'm pretty sure that people would be a little bit upset with me if I didn't actually show you the wall and talk a little bit about it. Now, I know you haven't had a proper update for a little while. The reason for that, I mean, it's just, it's not its best really. I'll talk about it as we go, but there are some gaps and there are some crispy bits that I haven't been able to pull off. Essentially, I just haven't been in this area, the scissor lift has been here and it's had grow lights mounted on it to basically just power this wall because I left it over winter without any lighting on it, thinking it would be fine, just thinking that it would have enough ambient light. Nowhere near enough. So many plants just didn't make it and died. So it is a little bit patchy. Now it might not look very patchy on camera right now. That's probably just due to the lighting. So I have flat lighting really pointing at the wall. I have two soft boxes here that you cannot see, but if I put my hands here, they'll get super bright. And I have a little ring light over my camera, so I've got like three point lighting. And really all the shadows coming from above, these two lights in the ceiling that you may have seen in my documentary, they act like sort of soft boxes. So the lighting here should be reasonably, well, how do you describe it? It's just nice sort of lighting. So, you know, the patches back here, you might not see any problems with. But in real life, if you were to walk up to it, you'd see them. You know what I mean? I don't know why I'm talking down this wall. It's stunning. It's stunning. So anyway, I'll take you on a tour of what you can see for now, because it does need a patch up. It does need a bit of TLC. I'm going to start with this girl, because as you'll notice, she's not doing very well. Now, I think I'm going to take her off the wall, guys. Every other queen anthurium I grow in this shop doesn't have any problems. But for some reason, she hates this wall and she hates this wall so much. We've tried and tried and tried. Has it been nearly two years now? Something like that. It's just, it's not doing her any good. So I think... It would be a shame to waste her, and I think we could have a cracking plant if we took her off and gave her some kind of almighty pole and grew her that way, maybe grew her next to the wall, but she was removable and we could survey the roots a little bit more because her leaves just don't last. We get good sized leaves, as you can see. This is borderline, well, it's the same size as when we got her, isn't it, really? Um, but obviously the tips are just shriveling up. That happens with the odd anthurium. I think the water on this wall goes acidic very quickly just due to the way that we built it. 
not ideal at all. Very difficult to maintenance as well. So we've got that going on there. We've got the, a little bit of crisping, but it's not really that concerning, to be honest. This guy, I don't know if you remember this guy. This guy you might have seen, um, oh goodness me, probably on a living wall patch up. I think we had to we had to do some work on the bottom of the wall. And we had to put all the lecker in and everything. I can't remember what video that was. I'll link that below if you're interested in the description. I think we did a patch up and then we did all of this bottom in. And to be fair, it looks great now. I'll link that video, but this is the same philodendron plow manii. And you're probably not going to be able to see. There's a new leaf coming in here. Sorry, I'm trying to find my monitor. I'm wiggling that and I can't see anything. I think it's behind this leaf. Yeah, there's a new leaf here coming in. But this guy is just the best, is he not? That is huge. Like, that is literally huge. I'm so thrilled that I'm able to grow them in almost like, almost like Florida kind of vibes, which is... I'm, I'm kind of proud of it, really, given that it's just, I'm in a glorified warehouse. So I'm pretty proud of that. She's lovely. This here is Philodendron Weeks Red. I picked her up in the documentary. You will have seen me in the Netherlands. I went to a nursery and I found him. He's very cool because he has burgundy undersides and he's grown a lot. I don't know what leaf this is. Is he on camera? Yeah. He's just growing upward for some reason. Don't really get what his deal is. Got a little bit of pesticide on him there. The tie is done all right. Again, it's kind of spread itself quite low, a little bit hungry for feed, not gonna lie. And it didn't really have feed in winter. It's probably not the best thing to do when you've got Monstera. In my experience, you should probably feed them anyway because they're so hungry. Not every plant, but certain plants. Um, obviously this guy, you see him, he's great. So how tall is he now? Two meters maybe? I do have, you probably can't see him. Can you see any leaves? No. So there's a variegated Monstera over there. Off that, just a little bit further off frame, there is a second massive monstera. Okay, that's going to be annoying. Do you guys? Do you guys remember that? Uh, was it not last year? It was in 2020 in my old shop. This bloody ice cream van would pull up and make a lot of noise. And it would be really, really, really irritating. And it would stop me in every video. Well, I guess he's found where the new place is, right? And now he decides he's gonna rock up here. So apologies if he makes an entrance. I mean, not literally, can you imagine? Off frame, we have a basically a twin of this guy and he's honestly about as big off camera. I would love to put him, well, I'd love to put him in my house, but he's starting to crawl up the wall. He's maybe, yeah, maybe two meters. Like, okay, so if he's two meters, he's probably 2.5 to nearly three meters. He's gone. He's gone a little bit ballistic. Obviously, Gloriosum. I don't think you can see the big leaf up there. No, it's just off camera. That's a shame. The Gloriosum has adapted to the wall really well. It's beautiful. We've got some, I believe, golden dragon. Again, I don't think you can see that there. There's a few bits and pieces. There's a couple of different anthurium. There is Pareso Verde, tiny bits of ghosts, some crispiness in the background that you might pick up on. The odd anthurium. There is a cheeky little Magnificum here. Can you see him? Yes, when I sort of pull him, there, there, there's stuff. And it does look good. I'm not trying to talk it down, but it could look a bit bare, I think. So yeah, that is the best living wall update I can give you for now. So that is what you see. All I did this morning was I, I basically trimmed a little bit of crisp and just left it. And then I framed what honestly has to be the nicest frame in a while. And I think I need to do more videos in front of this because this is hot. This is really, look at that glory awesome up there. Oh, <gasps> God, that's nice. Okay, so anyway, right. On with the repotting, on with the update. If you're looking for an easy way to build and run your own website, then look no further than Squarespace. Squarespace is your one-stop shop to create your own website from the ground up using a selection of stylish and super customizable templates. I love how I can create a really cohesive theme across my website without much effort at all. By using the site styles panel, I can customize how I want all of my fonts and buttons to look across the entire website, as well as the color scheme. So basically any change I make in here is reflected reflected across the whole website instantly. If you want to create a really sleek looking website, either for yourself or perhaps you're setting up a web shop like mine, check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Kaylee Ellen to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's it for voiceover, Kaylee. Back to the video. So this guy is my Miranda Silver Band, if you don't know what he is. He is, well, he's a type of Maranta, and he has been growing in my studio for some time. He blooms all the time, 
which probably means he should be potted up again, but I'm not going to do it. And I'm not going to do it because have you seen the size of him? He's getting really big. Sorry, my table is moving. So he does have a lot of little sort of piffly bits at the back that honestly don't really get the light, but I'm not too bothered to be honest. I think he's going. He's leaving. Cool. Yeah, he flowers all the time, so I want to leave him for a little bit. He might get reported in maybe two months. I don't know. I just don't want to disturb him at the minute because he's doing so well. Uh, but literally, that's a flower. That's a flower. That's a flower. He has flowers on here. He has flowers on this side. Usually when plants flower, I mean, there's a lot of reasons why they flower, but in a household environment, normally it's a good indicator that your plant might need repotting. Now, you can keep things pot bound to get more flowers, right? Case in point would be the Strelitzia, well, either Strelitzia, the Strelitzia Nicolai or Regina or something like that. That's the bird of paradise plant. A lot of people say, you know, if you want your plant to flower, keep it pot bound. Well, it's kind of similar for this. So this plant is really hinting on to me personally that it wants to be repotted, but I'm probably not going to do it. What I'm probably going to do now is pull this up to have a look and I'm going to be very upset because it's going to be roots out the bottom of the pot. And if you watched last week's video, you know, that's a bit upsetting. Yeah, literally look at that. So that's, that's a little bit upsetting, but I'm actually not going to do anything about it. Plus it's Maranta and I don't think they're going to care as much about being sort of stuck there like that. Now, how do I get this back without ooh, damaging it? Please don't, please don't, please don't. Right, so we're going to give him a little trim and we're going to talk about him. But yeah, he's grown so well, isn't he? Loads of people are asking me how I get them this big and like what the hell, they've never seen leaves this big. I haven't either. And my other two Maranta aren't necessarily behaving that way. I don't know, it's probably just a feed I'm using. Right, so we'll not jump right into the horse thing because I know people get real upset about it. So we'll start with fish. Should we start with some fish? Just nice lighthearted stuff. As you may know, <laughs> I'm undergoing some, some legal stuff at the moment. And part of that is basically I'm working overtime and I'm trying to save basically every penny that I get in order to pay for various solicitors' letters and legal fees and everything else. I think my solicitor costs £200 an hour. And I think the first letter she wrote for me was, was it three hours worth? So that's just a piece of paper that I paid £600 for. So at the minute, money is a bit tight, is my point. So I've been saving as much money as I can, especially since January, since I knew I had a solicitor. That's when I kind of got one anyway. And... <laughs> I've been saving all this money and I will get onto this in a bit, so it is part of the update, but I basically moved out of my Manchester flat in well, it was sort of mid to late January and I moved out in the middle of having really bad flu. Essentially, it was a struggle getting, you know, moving my tank to where I'm currently at and I kind of broke the tank basically. Didn't know about it, but long story short, what I'm alluding to here is that I got a slow leak. Not good. Took a long time to work out that I had a slow leak. Now, I've never really loved the tank itself since I got it, really. I, I knew I wanted fish. I think I got fish in 2019. I think it was before Miami. I'd like to think it was during that summer of 2019. I got it and I looked online and people were like, yo, get a bigger tank because any problems, you know, the, the larger volume of water is like a buffer. So I did and I just picked whatever I could afford at the time. I think it was an Eheim, was it Viviline or something? LED, not a great tank. Um, oh, it's horrible. Just it's a horrible tank. But anyway, long story short, that tank, I never liked it, but I made do because fish tanks are very expensive. Glass is very expensive. I made do and now is not a good time to have a slow leak on a fish tank. But long story short, shunting it up some stairs, took the silicone off some of the edges and the corners, the corners of the glass got kind of crunched in. I knew about it at the time, but I thought, okay, well, let's keep an eye on that. And it was a slow leak. So unfortunately, maybe three, four weeks ago now, I had to basically go out and buy another tank. And unfortunately, that's taken up most of my savings that I've been saving for court. So that's not ideal. So I've got a new fish tank and it's beautiful, but it, it's kind of bittersweet for me because although I love my new tank, it's gorgeous. It's great. Fish have a better time in it. Everything is awesome. It was not the right time to do that, but I knew I had to buy a new fish tank and I thought, hey, I'm not going to, I'm not going to get something that I don't like 
So I picked a nice one. I picked a very good one for the money, actually. So I've spent money I didn't want to spend on a new fish tank, but I have my new fish tank. My fish tank looks beautiful. I've gone from a 240 litre to a 395 litre. And let me tell you, it is beautiful. I'm battling algae on all my plants, although I'm, I'm winning that battle. So what I didn't realise was my tap water has a shit ton of phosphate in it and I'd never bothered to test it. So I was using phosphate remover on my tank all the time. I was spending so much money on Fosgard and what I didn't do was test my tap water, which is full, and I mean full to the brim of phosphates. So right now I'm working on that. I'm now using RO water on my tank because I have an RO unit here that I can use for water. So I've been filling up jerry cans and using that on the tank. Water changes now a lot more though. So the whole cost of my tank has gone right up. So I'm doing that and I'm trying to combat the algae and things like that. I bought more cleanup crew to try and handle it. I turn the lights off a little bit more and I, I think I'm finally getting on top of it, I would say. So that's really good, but it's not an expense I wanted. You know what I mean? But I'm, I'm pleased I've got a new tank and I, I'm thankful because I, I don't know what I would have done if I hadn't noticed the slow leak either. So I don't even want to think about it. If anyone curious for what fish I keep, I keep mainly rainbows, rainbow fish. I do have a few torpedo barbs in there or roseline, is it roseline shark? Except it's not a shark. Or roseline barb. What else do I have in there? I've got some plecos, some fancy plecos. And I just added, the other day I added some angel fish and I am in love with them. I actually want a tank full of angel fish now. I really like them. So that's my weird little fish tank update. For those of you asking to see it, I may as well not show you anything until, well, I'll go into it in a minute, but until I'm in my new place and I can show you a tank without algae everywhere, anyway. So I've got some Anubias in there, but it's just, it's covered, basically. It's covered. But I have um, some Otto Sinkless that I bought that seem to be chewing through it, so that's good. We like that. So yes, that is a little mini fish tank update, just for anyone that cares. I had a bit of a, a leaky tank, which, don't get me wrong, I'm thankful I had some, some savings to pay for it, but I kind of needed that. <laughs> I didn't mean I needed that for other things, so it is what it is, I suppose. Right, so what I want to do is I do actually want to propagate a little bit from him. So I said I wasn't going to do much but trim him, and technically I'm, I'm not lying to you. But I am going to take a little bit off for propagation. So I don't know what I want to take off. We could take off just this. I almost need to see him here. He's a little bit longer on this side, isn't he? So we could definitely take some of this off here, I think. I was going to say, is that crispiness? No, it's my arm. <laughs> That's how orange my skin is. I think we should take some of this off. <gasps> Oh, there we go. So we've got some, some really nice leafage. If I hold that up to the camera so you can see how beautiful they are. That's Maranta Silver Band, if you ever needed to know. I have a hair hanging off my arm. So I'm going to propagate that. Anyone curious, I'll be water propagating that. Best way with Maranta. Literally never lost a plant. Perfect. So is he really lopsided or does he not look that bad? Hey, you know what? He looks all right now, doesn't he? I think that's reasonable. He's so bald at the back, guys. It's not even funny. <laughs> Bless him. So yes, that is a fish update that no one asked for. Cool. So next update I have, oh, I don't know which, which order to go for. Should we do the horse really quickly? Because unfortunately I don't have an update for you as big as I would have liked. So we will, we'll do that update. So the horse update, in fact, we'll switch plants, shall we? I think that's a good idea. So wait a minute. I think I'm going to leave him like that. Isn't he lovely? Try and hold him up to the camera so you can really see him. Look at him. He's so pretty. Right, we'll pop him back down and then we could look at, hmm, what should we do? This guy next. And I will talk you through what I'm going to do with him. He's not very happy. I don't know if you can tell, but compared to the last guy, he is not very happy. So before we continue with the update, I'm going to basically tell you a little bit about this guy. This guy, I believe I bought. I could be wrong, but I feel like I bought this guy in 2020 and I bought him from Facebook because I think you might be able to get them here and there in the UK now. So there's probably no problem. But at the time you really can't, sorry, you couldn't get this variety in the UK at all. Like it was basically coming from the Netherlands. So, I mean, let alone the silver band. I think I won an auction for that on eBay, that one, if you wonder where that one's from. But this guy here, I think I got from the Netherlands and he's never been happy all I did was I took him in the substrate he was in and I put him in whatever mix I had at the time, which I think was, I feel like it was 60-40 Hoya to Lekka. It's like a kind of like a mix in the bag. And I put it in that thinking he'll be fine. He's Maranta, he loves the moisture. And he does. But as you can see, despite being, well, he hasn't been fed a lot, don't get me wrong. 
but he's just not very happy at all. His leaves are very small. He's very dense, so he looks good in that sense, but he could really use a bit of a growth spurt. So although he's absolutely beautiful, he's just not that happy, I wouldn't say. I think we can get a lot more out of him. If I just put my hand up next to the leaf so you can show, remembering that my hand was the size of the leaves on the other plant. You can see how much smaller these are. So what I'd like to do is get him out of here and essentially, let's drain him off while I talk. Oh, damn. Get him out of here and essentially pot him up into Lecker and Pond a little bit, just to see if, you know, we can do any better than that. He is going to lose that, I'm afraid, which is really shit. It is what it is. There's no way I'm going to get that through there. I'll probably just cut these guys. And I know, I know I'm not supposed to be cutting roots, literally. Um, I have learned that over the years. But from the other day, I'd rather not rip. I'd rather just trim that. So we are going to lose literally all of that, unfortunately. If you wonder what this black is, it's not raw. It's just, it's soil that's clearly come out. So yes, I know I'm cutting his roots. But honestly, from experience, guys, this is not going to work if I don't. He will be absolutely fine. He really will. Please do not worry yourself. There is the root. Ew. Ew, ew. Ew. Oh, I'll tell you what. Right, I'm putting him back on the table. I'm going to get a spoon. Yes, I'm going to get a spoon. Ben would be proud. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do in advance so I can just start talking to you again. It's because it's not that interesting. I'm basically just going to try and spoon this plant out. I do have a bucket here. I know, very visually appealing. I do have a bucket here that I'm basically going to try and just get the soil out. And then we'll get it back in probably the same container and we will put it in pond. I'm just putting some gloves on because... I just don't like soil under my nails. That's the only reason I wear gloves, guys, honestly. There's no weird reason. Unless I'm doing some kind of weird root treatment, then I don't wear them. Right, what is my next update? Yes, it was horse. Yes, sorry, horse. Right. Stick with me, those of you that don't give a shit about my horse. I know you don't give a shit about him. You've made that very, very clear. But unfortunately for you guys, I am a human being. I know it's weird and I have all these other things in my life that aren't just sitting on camera and doing things for free for you guys to watch all the time. Unfortunately, I do have to do other things in my life to be fulfilled. So I am genuinely sorry that, you know, that's just not enough for people. But you can always skip to the timestamp that I provided. Put it that way. Anyway, very quickly, if you don't know anything about the horse thing, I will link the report where I told you all about the horse thing, the story of what happened and what's now happening. But long story short, I was missold a horse and I'm going through a legal battle to basically return the horse for my money back. That's all I want. I don't really, I don't want damages. I don't want anything. I just, I just want that. I think I got a response from my solicitor when I was actually in the middle of filming, if I remember rightly with you guys, but I couldn't give you that response because she hadn't basically emailed it. She wanted to look over it before I got it. So I got the response. It was actually like four days later, by the way. It was killing me. It was killing me. But I got that response. And there's not a lot of update to give. The seller just basically said, fuck you, no. They deny that the horse is... Oh, hang on. I'm moving my little table. Oh, shit, son. Shit, son. Oh. Okay. So they deny that the... If you wonder what I'm looking at, I'm looking at that. They deny that the horse is defective in any way. I didn't rely on any of her expertise in basically buying the horse. I, I don't get how that works because um, I'm a novice. I realize this is a lot of this is like legal jargon. So if you wonder what I mean by any of this, basically, if you've seen my Dish the Dirt video on selling plants as private sellers and stuff like that, the reason I knew about that, guys, is because I'm going through it with my horse. So the same applies. So long story short, she's a private seller. Buyer beware only applies in certain circumstances unless I've been deliberately misled or there's a few things I think you have to fulfill. She has to be proven to deliberately deceive me. I have to prove that I relied on her judgment and her expertise, blah, 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 blah. There's a few things. So she denies that there is basically any problems, which is so stupid because I have, you know, I have evidence to the contrary, shall we say. I don't think she watches this video as well. She'll find out in due course uh, what my evidence is. That's basically it. So it was just a, a really horrendous letter written back, just basically saying, no, no, and no, fuck you, go away. And she had the nerve to write at the end of her letter, well, her solicitor did, listen, go away and enjoy your horse. Enjoy him. What? Are you serious? 
So anyway, we're going to come up with a few bits and pieces to write the letter back. And I, I realized this was a long time ago, but I've had to rely on some evidence from my yard manager and stuff like that. And he's been very busy. He's obviously a very busy guy. And very recently, he's just told me this morning he's had COVID for the last two weeks. So he hasn't been able to get quite as many things going. So it is a little bit delayed, my response. So basically, I haven't responded to that first response from them. But it's basically going to be, fuck you. So they're not willing to cooperate is the long and short of it, guys. They're just absolutely refusing. I mean, she's picked the wrong person if she thinks I'm just going to go away. Do you know what I mean? Like, literally, she's picked the wrong person. She's got the wrong bitch if she thinks I'm going away. All I want, genuinely, is my money back and I want to send the horse back so I can get a new one. Like, I mentioned this before, but not only am I having to save up all the money for the court fees, but I'm paying an extortionate amount of money for a horse that I can't ride and I can't even go near him. And I'm paying for lessons every week, horse riding lessons. I would be having one today, but I've had to cancel it just due to work reasons. And I pay that every week. I'm paying stupid amounts each month to what amounts to just learning to ride. So I don't want to go on about it forever, but my update is there is not a lot of update. She basically just said, fuck you. So we're now preparing another response anyway, which is going to be very interesting, this one. I don't think there's any way of it not going to court. My solicitor seems hopeful for some silly reason, bless her, that it's not going to go to court. I disagree. I completely disagree. Everyone that has met this seller disagrees as well. It's going to court, which likely means if anyone's interested, I think it's three to five months for a court date. But you kind of have to go backwards and forwards with letters for a while to make it um, to seem reasonable in the eyes of the court so that when the judge does eventually hear your case, he will take into account whether you could have sorted it out of court and what you've tried to do, how reasonable you've been. So, I mean, if, if my seller is watching this, I hope you have worked out that you being this unreasonable is not going to go well in your favor in court. Because if you think we're going to leave that part out, we ain't, you know. So just be reasonable. Do the reasonable thing. The thing I don't understand is this seller hasn't lost anything. If this was a fine horse, like she's saying, right, the seller wouldn't have lost out. She'd get the horse back and she would get to sell it again. I don't see who I'm duping here. Do you see what I'm saying? It's not a lost anything. She could sell it. If there was truly nothing wrong with it, she could sell it for the same amount of money. Someone would pay for it and someone would have a great horse. She doesn't want to do that because clearly she knows there is a big problem. But anyway, not to drone on about that, guys, but I think it's going to be caught. But caught will be so far down the line. I think we're looking at near the end of this year. So it could get to Christmas and I still have that horse, which is, it's sad for me, but it's also, oh God, it's also very sad for the horse, you know? Like, don't get me wrong, I'm sure he's going to love being out in the field all the time and just having a chilled life, great. But that's the only thing that makes me feel good. Do you know what I mean? I just think he could have a far more fulfilling life, an active life. And maybe I'm wrong about that. You know, it depends what your views are on that kind of stuff. But again, to reiterate, he's very well looked after. He's, he could not be in a better place. Literally, the, um, the livery he's at is, is, it doubles up as a horse spa. That's the best way I can put it. They specialize in rehabilitating horses, like even Olympic level horses after serious injuries and stuff. Um, it's, it's good. It's a good place. Very, very lucky to be able to have any horse there, let alone, you know, let alone a bad one. doesn't really matter. Again, to reiterate, not his fault. If you want full details, I will leave the linked video below. If I haven't, pester me, I will put it in. But that's it, guys. There's, there's not a lot to tell you other than that. Sorry, this is literally sludge, by the way. I would love it if I had a bucket of water. I'm doing my best to pull all the shit off, but it's so mangled up. It's minging. So the next thing I want to talk to you about is, well, basically, I, I often, as you know, put out, either ask you in these videos, ask you in normal videos, I ask you on Instagram, I ask you on Community Tab, which I'm going to start doing more of, by the way, because I feel like that was really successful. I feel like a lot of you got to voice your opinions that wouldn't be able to if you missed my Instagram story, so I, I will do more of that. At one point, I asked you, like, what's the number one video you want to see on my channel? And obviously, there was loads of different stuff. But there was, there was definitely a video that kept recurring a lot. And I mean a lot, like constantly popping up. And it made me really sad because it's not a video I can do. So the video that you guys kept requesting was, we'd love to see a tour of your personal plants at home. And if you caught something I said earlier on in the video, you'll know that I moved out 
I moved out of there, of where I was living in Manchester, Manchester City, so like a city apartment type thing. You know, the one, the one that you always saw in videos. I moved out of there in January, and I'm kind of in between places at the minute, essentially. So all of the plants that were in my home are here. And it makes me really sad because I would love to do tours and things like that. But I guess this leads me to my next update. So essentially what I've always done for years is I've spent a ton of money on rent and stuff like that being in Manchester. I'm just going to snap this. I don't care anymore. These, these roots aren't very good, by the way. I don't know if you can tell, but they're not good at all. They're really weak roots. Really, really weak. They could do with something coarser. Yeah, so it, it's really sad because I can't make those videos for you guys. I've always spent loads of money on rent. And the one thing I wanted to do to save money and to actually build towards some kind of future is to get a house. I don't know what it's like for you guys in America, how difficult it is. I'm not sure. I'm not sure about any country, actually, other than the UK. But it's it's pretty difficult nowadays to get a house. Like, it's 10 out of 10 difficulty. And the problem is, I'm obviously trying to save as much money as I can for that. But at the same time, poetically so, there is the horse situation that's taking borderline every single penny I get. So... I'm doing my best to save up for a mortgage and I've done some looking up on this, but it's it's really not very easy to get a mortgage when you're self-employed. Now, I'm not saying it's just easy when you are employed, but trust me, self-employment and mortgages, oh my God, you've got no idea. So along with a few other requirements anyway, in the UK to get a mortgage if you are employed. The main financial background they want to do, other than obviously credit checks and things like that, they usually want three months bank statements, as well as all your like your committed outgoings and stuff like that. They want that, they want credit check, they want to see that you've got enough money for the deposit, blah, 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 blah. And I think, I could be wrong, I think you, you're borderline good to go after that, right? Not how it works for self-employment. Do you know how, how much proof they want of your financial background? They want three years worth of self-employment. And I tried, I mean, oh God, it's a story time and I'll, I'll tell you about it in, you know, in another video. But basically I tried to figure out if I could get a mortgage back in December before I even left where I was. Basically my mortgage advisor screwed me over, just completely ghosted me, ignored me. It was really embarrassing, hopefully for her at least. It's, it's, a, it's a whole story. So long story short, I didn't get that opportunity. My plan was to see what I could get in December and then think, right, do I have to wait to the next tax year or not? Which brings me onto it. So today is the 5th of April. I think I can submit last year's earnings for my tax tomorrow, which that was all done last night and I've worked out you know, what my earnings are, what my tax is, blah, 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 blah. But I've had to wait and do that because when I, I've only just got to, well, I think this would be the fourth tax return I've filled in. So the first one, though, was when I just quit my job. And I didn't make a lot of money then at all. Like, literally, it, things were difficult. Before I quit my job, if you guys remember, I went down to like three days a week so I could do YouTube. As soon as YouTube started doing well, I was like, right, okay. And I dropped down. I wasn't making anything off YouTube, literally nothing. <laughs> I dropped down at work, so I was making a lot less money, like slashed in half easily, to be honest. But that's reflected on my tax return, right? So no one's going to give me a mortgage if that year is included. The next year was a bit better. I guess COVID helped. wouldn't say it was a, an unbelievable increase, but it, it was all right. Um, so obviously this last year that's just gone is the first year where I've been able to put my back into it and do a bit more work and, and you know, do something. So long story short, I've had to wait all this time to submit my tax return. And literally tomorrow morning, I'm going to ring a mortgage advisor and see if I can get a mortgage. Um, I don't know anything about the process, how long it takes or anything. I don't even fully know what I need because my last mortgage advisor, oh my God, I think I need to write a review. And I'm not one of these people that leaves reviews, to be honest, even if I've had a bad experience. But this takes the cake. This actually takes the cake because in like six months, there has not been a mortgage application submitted by my old advisor in six months. No. So anyway, I'm going to be applying for that tomorrow and hopefully I can get un, un, un house. Um, there is one that I really like. There aren't many left, which is a shame. It's a new build. What I'm alluding to is I'm trying really, really hard to get one and I hope I can get one. And if I get one, you guys will get all the content 
in my house. Like, I will be able to film more in the house and stuff like that. I'll be able to do fish tank videos. There'll be so much more stuff I can do in the house, right? I really do need this house. A few people asked me, it's actually for a different Repop video, but what about a podcast, this, that, and the other? I've had plans for a podcast for the last two years, but I need to be in my own place for it. I can't do anything at the minute. I literally can't do anything at the minute. But that is a plan because me and Pam, Pam's Pretty Plans, have talked about doing a podcast for so long and I think it would be absolute fire if we did one. So that is definitely something I want to do, guys. Make no mistake about it. 100% I would love to do that. I just, again, I have to have a proper place set up. I couldn't podcast in here. I mean, let's be honest, the sound in here right now is bad enough. It's bad enough. So I certainly wouldn't be doing that. I'm not actually gonna rinse this, you know, yellow, literally yellow. So there, there's so many things I wanna do, so many videos I wanna make for you guys, but I cannot make them yet. I can't do a tour of the plants at home because I don't sort of have a home, right? I can't do any of these things. So I need to wait. And I don't know how long it's gonna take. Like I can't even, I guess this is a really shit life update because I can't even give you the, the timelines. I can't give you the answers because my entire life right now genuinely relies on fucking everything else except my efforts and all my efforts are going into just trying to earn as much money as I can to save it but then stupid things keep cock blocking me because this is the kind of life I live just things just happen to me inexplicable things happen to me like for example the tank not a foreseen expense unfortunately but you know, it's happened. It's happened and, and that's that's the tea. You know what I mean? Genuinely, I'm, I'm approaching this with optimism, but I'm, I'm very scared. That's the best word I could, I could, you know, come up with. And I don't like using that word because I feel like I then have to confront my feelings. But I'm very scared because I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen with money. I don't know what's going to happen with anything because obviously I have to pay for that horse. That is the number one priority. He depends on me. It's like having a kid, right? And I mean that in the sense of it's it's money you've got to spend on them sort of thing. And I'm not saying that a horse is a child, although it feels like it, doesn't it? I'm just doing the best I can. And I'm genuinely praying, 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 praying that I'm perhaps mortgageable. But I mean, I could go on a big, big rant about how ridiculous it is for anyone these days to get on the property ladder. And I would love to know, I mean, this is typical typical complaint that I know a lot of you might have, why uh, the older generation really give us quite a bit of shit actually about, you know, oh, get yourself a house. You know, when I was your age, I had this, I had that, I had that. And it's like, you, you're not living in that world anymore. That world doesn't exist. It's gone, it's gone. The older generation that were able to get properties, you do not understand how fortunate you are. And that's not to say that you haven't worked for it or anything of the sort. I'm just saying that you could put in three times that amount of work nowadays and still not get anything for it. You know what I mean? It's absolutely ridiculous that it all works this way. But I'm not going to be beaten. I'm going to do my best to get what I need. And I tell you something, this used to look fucking great until I've repotted it. And now, literally, it looks absolutely shit. I feel like this was in three clumps. I'll turn around in a second. But, you know, it doesn't look that bad from the front. But it's really shit, and now it just looks bald up top. I'm not too bothered about the um, the moisture around those roots, by the way, because I can see what it's grown in, and it was basically mud. So anything's an improvement. I know that a lot of people baby their plants, and to an extent, yeah, I think you should, but you would be amazed at what plants can cope with. If you think about it out in the wild, so many things can happen, and plants live. They want to live. People forget that. They want to live. You would genuinely be amazed by the things that your plants can withstand and adapt to. You would genuinely be amazed. I mean, they live throughout my care, right? So this looks shit, literally. I'm going to clean it up in a minute because I need to kind of clean up this table. That actually looks all right on camera. That doesn't look half as bad. So yeah, that's, that's what it is, guys. You guys have asked me for a lot of videos and God, I would love to do them. I would love to do it. I miss filming at home. I miss filming at home so much. It's the same reason why the second channel hasn't really had any content on it because I cannot do it. I can't do it right now. It's not feasible. I'm having to put every effort into working to try and basically save as much money as I can for these things I've mentioned. Hello, sponsors, <laughs> if you haven't worked it out. But yeah, that's basically where we're at with that. As soon as something happens, obviously, on any of these things, I'll tell you. And again, I know people don't like me bringing it up, but I guess I will. You know, I will talk about these things on my channel, guys. I don't understand why people expect me to be a soulless creature that just exists to talk about plants. It's like, oh my God, I don't, I don't get these people. 
Don't worry, I'm not going to get annoyed about it because I've spent too much time getting annoyed about it. But it's just so evil to just assume that people can just be that. Like, I don't know. Anyway, what am I looking for? I'm looking for some squirty stuff. And I don't like stuff on my hands, right? This is another thing. And I've never, I've never told you guys this before. But when I was a kid, my mom will laugh about this because she knows exactly where I'm going with this before I even say anything. You know when you're a baby, right? And, you know, or you're a baby or you have kids or whatever and you, like, feed them something and then it just gets everywhere, right? On their face, on their hands, all sorts. Well, me as a kid, I hated that, right? I hated it when I was, well, a, a young babyling, right? I would get something in my hands if mum, what did mum say? She used to give me, like, a jammy, some kind of jam thing, a jam sandwich or a jam biscuit or something. And it would go all over me because I was a baby. You feel me? And um, I would sit there, I would scream the place down, apparently. I would cry, I would scream, I would, I would do all of that. And I would sit there like this, doing this with my hands, which meant clean my hands. And I'd be the same if I got it on my face. I'm exactly the same now. I don't like stuff on me. I hate it. Not so much on other places, but and even not my face. If I'm eating something messy, I mean, no one likes that, but... It's not really a problem, but stuff on my hands bothers me. It really bothers me. I don't like eating food and getting it on my hands or anything or touching stuff and getting it on my hands. I'm one of these people that I can't do the washing up unless I have rubber gloves. But like even just basic cleaning up, I can't do it without rubber gloves. So although I've said it's, you know, I use these gloves because I don't like things under my nails. It's, I guess it's a little bit more involved than that. Like I'm fine now wiping stuff up, but it's just this little weird thing that I've got and it, there's no sign of it getting any better either but yeah it depends what it is if it's dry stuff it's not a problem if it's like dusty or something like that like how pond gets not a problem lecker can be a bit ew but it's not a problem it's stuff like that that really gets me that stuff you know what I mean wet with a v or wet with an h wet anything like that mm -mm, can't do it don't worry I'm not wiping the plant although there is a lot of soil on him I don't know if I should just wait wait for it to dry and sort of dust it off I mean I don't know I will feed him, by the way, but I'm not going to do it now. I'm going to wait. So let's tip this out somewhere. Hang on. Two seconds, guys. Ew, it's on my hands. It's on my hands. It's on my hands. Ew, 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 ew. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I realize this video might be a bit long. But if I get through the life update, I will just talk about random shit. Maybe even the plants. Who knows? Um, but we're just going to roll with it today, guys. Because I know a lot of you say, oh, literally just talk about anything. Once again... I'm holding you to it. I'm holding you to it. I don't know why I think this will help, but I'm just kind of wiping off all the crap under the leaves and whatnot. It's, it's not going to help, is it? This is stupid. This is very stupid. Although we say this, it's kind of working. Hopefully he doesn't look shit for long. Obviously I'm going to trim some of these, but he might look a bit bold in the middle. He did look great, but obviously once you move them, it takes a little bit of time to get them looking good again. And the thing... I always like doing is I pot a plant that I, I want to have, you know, in a certain spot, whatever, and I'll, I'll put it there. And by the time I want to show you guys, sometimes I'll have waited till they've settled in a couple of weeks just so they move nicer. Pro tip, if you're rearranging something and you want to make it look good, don't actually do the final effect of it until a little bit later. If you're going to Instagram it, just wait till those plants kind of grow into, you know, into place a little bit more, if you've got the time. And I don't think that's a weird deceptive hack or anything. That's the hack I'm willing to give, right? That's the hack I feel comfortable giving. It's not deceiving anyone. It's just you know, they grow into their spots. You see so many amazing, amazing pictures of people's shelves on Instagram. And they look absolutely stunning. Honestly, I'm loving it. Um, I've got to wonder sometimes if the plants actually live like that, because a lot of them are very close together. So I always assume they've been done for the photograph, but I don't know. But they look really, really good. But in a lot of cases, they look like they've grown that way. Um, but you can totally do that. I need to start doing that, I think. Especially if I'm going to photograph plants at the shop. I would love to get them out a couple of days before. You know, line them up down here or something and point a grow light straight at them because then they'll just, they'll move nicely. They'll be a bit more photographable because sometimes it's a little bit, a little bit difficult. Again, pro hack. Pro hack. Use lighting to make your plants look uh, better, a better layout. You know what I mean. So right, yes, where were we? Apart from me literally needlessly, needlessly dusting off this maranto. Now it's just Gus. I actually need to separate Gus out a little bit. He's not going to have much done to him. I'll explain what's happened to him and we'll separate him out because he has another maranto in with him at the minute. So I'll explain that. It's not a bad issue, don't worry. Everything is fine. 
It is Gus. He's alive. He is well. He just, he's had some shit. I don't think it was root rot. I think the pot dried out and it just, I, I moved it to a lighter spot because it had so much growth, guys, that was just shit, right? He was so much bigger, by the way, and I've cut him, I cut him right back to nothing and he's grown out again. Yes, there is some, some other things in there with him. We'll get to that. But as you can see, he's not, he's not having a good time at all. Same mixture as the others, so it's not the mixture. He just had a rough ride of it, really. This growth here is leggy and nasty, but for a long time, he was in, I think if you remember in my kitchen, he, he didn't get the best care, did he? Let's just be honest, he didn't. He, just, he wasn't being looked after well enough. He really wasn't. He got the, the least amount of my attention, which is really bad. At the time, I think that did most damage was when the unit was being done up in 2020. And it was just horrific. And he was just one of the guys that got watered the least. If the watering can ran out by the time I got to him and I didn't have time, he would he would go, you know, an extra couple of days. And I've got no excuses for it. Shouldn't have done it. Here we are. So what I did was I took him out of the other pot. He was in a very round pot, which I actually recommend for Maranta because it helps him get a good shape. So I've moved him into this and he's been in there for six months, nine months, something like that. You'll be able to see it probably when I unpot him, but there is different chunks of him. I, yeah, you probably can't see this, but there's like a chunk here, a chunk there. So I kind of trimmed him right back down and put him in here and he was very, very broccoli sort of shaped. So he's grown from that, but again, he's still not grown brilliantly. He's grown better though. I just think the base of him was so weak. So he needs some TLC and I probably will trim him by, right back and I'm probably not going to propagate the pieces. I am just going to leave it. Not only that, we have, you won't be able to tell, you can hear, we have this guy. See him there? He is not a Maranta, I can't remember what they call this one, that one there, literally. He is not the same. He is a little piece of the Maranta No ID that I got in 2020. God, a lot happened in 2020. How did I survive? And I had him at the flat as well, and he just, he never grew. He looked pathetic. So I moved him in with it and thought, right, sod it. He could do with bulking out anyway, because um, Gus was so light on the ground, should we say, you know. So I put him in with it and he's done better. There's different pieces of him, I think. I'm going to depot Gus and I'm going to trim him up and he is still going to look shit, right? He is. He just is. And then I'm going to take out the no ID and put him in a little pot, which I'll grab right now. So that's what we're going to do. So first things first, I'm just going to trim him and then we're going to get this out and I'm going to see what else I had to tell you about, which I don't think there's too much. Ah, yeah. So we've talked about the fish, talked about the horse. We've talked about the house, which is reasonably major update because um, I'm finding I'm finding life very difficult at the minute. Most of my stuff is boxed up and I only have access to like maybe 10% of all my things. It's really difficult. So anyway, enough about that. I'm happy to answer more questions about that in the future. Oh, I'm going to definitely trim all this. Look at this. The last update I have, guys, it's, it's not really a health update. It's more of like a lifestyle update. And that is that in amongst everything else, I haven't been feeling great mentally. Um, and that's, that's way before any of this shit happened. Way before any of this shit happened. Um, those of you that have a keen memory will remember why I bought the horse. I'm not saying that's the only reason I bought the horse, obviously. But it was a large part of it and it was to help with my mental health, to get me outside more, to have a bond with an animal, to progress a skill, to just experience life in a bit more of a raw format. You know, not something technology based, not something anything like that. I can just go out and have a great ride and, a, you know, a great bond with an animal and, and, and everything else. All of that stuff. Horse riding made me very, very happy. <sighs> It still does, but I would be the biggest liar in the world if I said that it hadn't been severely tainted. And I hope after all this that I still want a horse. But anyway, that's why that was bought. It was bought from a fitness perspective and a mental health perspective and a... I guess that's... that's you could, you could boil it down to just those two things if you want to. But anyway, so obviously, as we've covered, that's not happening anymore. And I haven't been feeling great at all. Physically, health-wise, not good. I've gained quite a bit of weight. You probably can't tell. I'm not saying I'm fat or anything like that, but for me, I've gained a lot of weight and I don't feel great. I don't feel confident in clothes. I don't feel confident about much, to be honest. I don't have much energy, even though I'm working longer than ever. And uh, through, through horse riding, actually, I've been able to keep up with sort of maintaining my scoliosis. If you guys don't know, I went to a, not a doctor, I don't know what you call them now. I can't remember, I can't think of the word, sorry. But someone that knows about spines and backs and joints, right? <laughs> the name will come to me. But I went and I found out I had scoliosis basically after having a lot of back pain, a lot of shoulder pain. Like I can't, it's so difficult to explain. I can't, that's as far as I can turn my head, right, to this side. But if I show you that, that's how far my head goes. On the other side, is it the same? It's about there. 
that's that's really bad on that side actually. That's as far as it can go. This shoulder is sat forward, it shouldn't be. That's part of my scoliosis, so my shoulder should be there. And that's as far as I can turn my head. Um, not too bad, except I think to put my head from side to side, this side, I can only go that far. This side, I can go that far. I can barely turn my head. My spine, if I were to show you it this way, you're not seeing it now, obviously, but my spine is like a, imagine a capital D shape, but just keep the curve of the D, right? That's what my spine does. It kind of curves out this way, like this. It's very subtle, don't get me wrong. It's very mild, but it means that this shoulder drops downwards and it drops forward. So that's my natural position on my shoulder. And I can see there it scoops forward. Whereas on this side, I can see it's just straight. Anyway, I've been battling with that. And another thing about horse riding is it was actually helping that even out, right? Because my guy, my back guy, my spine guy, basically said, look, you need to keep doing your exercises. You should come for sessions like massaging and working the tissue and stuff and relieving some of it so you can get more mobile because I couldn't move much. I'll get to it, but I've basically gone backwards with it. Um, but do is do any exercise, and he did give me a list. He said, do any exercise that promotes being symmetrical. So obviously horse riding was absolutely amazing for it, right? What more could you want? The whole point is you're supposed to be as symmetrical as possible. So I was doing a lot of that, and I had a couple of sessions with the guy, did some work on my back in in the session and then he would give me some exercise to do out the session. I started going to the gym a little bit more and it, it was definitely helping, it was definitely helping and it was getting better. Now fast forward to essentially not long after I moved out, so February, when I started working on that Dish the Dirt video. That video, if anyone is curious, I was editing that video, just editing it for a month solid, just editing it. Um, Prep took long enough. That was on the go for a long time, probably about another month. And then to finalize what was going in, because obviously stuff would keep popping up online. I'd have to keep changing it and keep re-recording the, the audio and stuff like that. Long story short, I was sat at a computer for stupid periods of time that aren't healthy. Literally, they're not healthy. I was doing 16-hour days sat basically on the sofa with the laptop on my lap because I've already moved out of my flat and I don't have a desk or a table or something like that to sit at, right? So it got even worse. So long story short, my scoliosis has reached a point where it's it's gone backwards. It's almost as bad as what it was if I hadn't done riding and if I'd only just found out about it, right? So that's really, really bad. Not only that, but because I was doing all that editing, I would maybe... Well, most of the time I wouldn't even eat during the day. I would sit and edit all day until about 10 o'clock at night and I would order some kind of takeaway and I'd eat that. And then I'd do it over and over and over and over and over. And honestly, I still feel like shit. I think I look marginally better. Um, I've, I haven't quite started a diet yet, but I'm progressing towards that now. Uh, I'll get onto that in a second. But I just felt like shit. And I joined up to a local gym around here. Thought, right, okay, fucking hell, I need to do something. So I joined up to that. And they were doing sessions for a personal trainer, like taster session on Friday just gone. I'm filming this on Tuesday, by the way. So the Friday just gone would be the last upload you saw last week. I'm now filming this on Tuesday. I had a little taster session because it was free and I thought, hey, I've never had a personal trainer before. I wonder what they're like. Didn't know what I wanted from the outcome at all. I just thought, well, it's free. I'm just going to see what it's like. I, I went and <laughs> I ended up getting a personal trainer, which I think will be very helpful but it was really cool. I went in, it was half an hour taster session. I think her paid sessions are 45 minutes. And I think she specializes in, it's actually more bodybuilder stuff for, for women. It's like a lot of like bikini competition stuff and stuff like that. And she specializes in having a diet that is more, I want to say normal, like quite achievable, quite realistic. And there's, as long as you get your 80% whole foods, you do what you want for the other 20%. And your meals don't have to look like salads and chicken breasts and stuff like that. You can, you can do it differently depending on your goals and stuff like that. So first thing she did was she sat down with me and she was like, hi, what are you here for? What, what's, what's the tea? What's occurring? And the first thing I said to her was basically in a nutshell, I just don't want to feel like shit anymore. And that encompasses so many things. It encompasses mentally. It encompasses physically in terms of diet and the energy I have or don't have. It encompasses how I feel about my body and my weight because I'm not happy with it at all. Not even remotely, not even 1%. Um, it encompasses a lot of things, really. So she was like, oh, okay. And then she was like, what do you eat? What do you do for a living? And blah, 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 which was interesting to explain. But I was basically like, look, a lot of the time I have to just be sat. I just have to be sat to edit and stuff like that. She was basically like, um, I might keep that one on. 
Well, we'll put this back here, actually. Sorry, I keep stopping, and I realise that's irritating. She was saying there was a way of, of doing diet and fitness that would that we could work around me, and that's the whole point. It's tailored to me. Um, I told her on my scoliosis, and I said, here's the tea. This is what I have done. This is what I know, blah, blah, blah. She was like, right, okay, we'll work with that. So the first work we're going to do is going to be back and shoulders, as you can imagine, and some arms, because I always joke about this, but I have little chicken wing arms. Like, that is my arm. I have absolutely no... That's me tensing. There is nothing. There is nothing. It's it's soft when I tense it. It's really bad. During 2020, actually, I got a really decent um, set of muscles on me, both on my shoulders and on my biceps. My biceps were fucking mint. And it's because, obviously, I painted every single brick in this unit. If you haven't seen my documentary, you won't know that. But this is a big fucking unit. I think it's 1,660 square foot, something like that. And uh, every single brick... I painted, including these. You can't see it, but behind here, if you don't know, is like a black stripe up the wall. And that's about, oh God, how big was the scaffold? Was it about seven meters? Seven meters tall, and that was just the scaffold. So literally huge. I think even people commented on my videos, like, oh, you look a bit healthier. You look, you look tired, but you kind of look, I don't know, you just look, I think someone said I look slimmer as well in the face. But anyway, we know, we know why that was, because I was doing it for the unit. So yeah, basically, I've enlisted a personal trainer. I am going to cut that, you know. I know you guys are going to hate me, but I just want him to have another fresh start. I think it's good for him. I think it's good for him. I want him to put more energy into what he has. I might propagate some of this and stick it back in, actually. and We'll do that at the end. I may as well. I'm propagating the other one. So fear not. But yeah, so I've enlisted her help. My first session is tomorrow, and I'm kind of excited where she will probably start me on a workout routine and... She will go over with me my new diet that I can't wait to follow. I think I got sessions for quite a good price. I think the more sessions you bought, the better the price was. So I bought quite a few. And I'm just looking forward to feeling a bit better, guys. Because I, I can't put it into words how shit I feel physically, mentally, everything. And it's, it's really hard to work this much when you feel this bad. Because I never have any time for myself. And that, that's something I want to change. And I know this goes back to the house thing. But... Everything seems to go back to the house thing because if I have my own place, I can recharge my batteries more. I have more time to spend relaxing. I can do all these things. I can do loads of different videos that I'd love to do with you guys. A lot more chilled stuff, all kinds of stuff, right? I'd love to start doing up a garden outside so I can do some of that, right? There's so many things I want to do and, and all of it goes back to having a house. Like, for example, I can cook better meals when I have a house and a kitchen. And that's not to say that I couldn't have prior. I'm not trying to make excuses for myself. You know, but I've I've been traveling backwards and forwards now for and until I've moved, obviously, for two, three years. I would consistently be at home one week and that's rough and I'm ready to stop doing that. So fingers crossed I actually get a house because I think mentally and physically it's going to help me a lot as well. And I should have more time to, you know, oh, God, more time to take care of myself, essentially. And that is genuinely what I want. I'm really quite hopeful about the personal trainer situation. I really, really am. I want that to go well. Now, I can't see it failing. Now, I couldn't really afford the personal trainer, I'm going to be honest with you, because um, I know you're probably thinking, oh my God, you're on about money and you've literally gone and paid for a personal trainer. I couldn't afford it, but at the end of the day, I thought, you know what? I can't see myself regretting this purchase. Do you know what I mean? I think... If I'm not well and happy and confident, strong and resilient in myself, how the hell am I going to get through this year? I'm not. I'm not. I'm already so tired. I've done this for years now without, without much of a break. I'm not going to say I've never had a break, obviously, but I haven't had much of a break over the last few years. Do you know what I mean? Since I started YouTube, it's, it, you guys know this, it's been pretty much goal time all the time. And I am not advocating that, by the way. A few people in the past have, have accused me of advocating that, and I'm not. I'm definitely not. I'm saying that I've done it, and it's not sustainable. Um, being right back, I'm going to get this out. Right, listen, Gus is small, but he needs to be. Just trust me when I say he needs to be. He needs, he needs this. He needs this. I'm just going to repot him really quickly off camera because there's not a lot of point showing you this. I am going to feed these plants, by the way, but it will be done afterwards because this is, this is a very long video today. I hope you guys are ready for a long video. Right, so before I continue, this is now Gus, right? I realize he's small. I realize he's somewhat pathetic, but he will get to be like the other boys in time. We are working on it. We're actively working towards it. I am going to propagate some of these. I'm probably not going to propagate every piece. We'll see how it goes. If anyone's wondering why I call him Gus, by the way, 
He's actually taken from the mouse, I think, from Cinderella, just because he was a bit, a bit stressy, a bit stupid. And I always thought that Marantha was kind of like that when I bought it. I think it was the first house plant I bought in Manchester. Or if it wasn't the first plant I bought, it was the first plant that did something. I moved, it was a bit stressful and stuff like that. I'm really attached to him, believe it or not. And I have had him now since 2018. So he's quite old, even though he does not look it. But I'm telling you now, I'm going to get him back to his former glory. By the end of this year, he's going to look unbelievable. The last little thing I've got is this little boy here. That is the no ID. I will try and show you to the camera. There, you can. You might be able to tell he's different. I don't know. But we're going to put him in his own little pot, which will take no time at all, actually. So yeah, basically that's that's the the gist of it. A lot's happening. A lot of uncertainties. Well, let's be honest, all of it's uncertain, literally. Um, and I'm doing my best. I'm working as hard as I can. I ask you to please bear with me. You know, there will be sponsorships on the channel. That's where it's going. Obviously, you will have already seen sponsorships on this channel, and today's video is an example of just that. Squarespace are great, though, and I'm saying this actually out of the sponsorship segment, but I really like Squarespace, and honestly, I would never, I never push something to you guys that I didn't actually think you would get use out of, enjoy something I didn't like, you know, anything like that. And I, I do actually run my website off it. So when I say I'm going to take sponsorships and stuff, I'm not saying I'm just going to randomly just slap ads on my videos or anything like that. That's not what it is. Um, I'll always pick things that I think you guys could benefit from or enjoy or something you're interested in or, or whatever else. Not everyone's interested in everything, don't get me wrong. But I always do think of you guys in mind, to be honest. And prior to this year, I didn't do any sponsorships on this channel because... I, I'll be honest, I think I feared judgment a lot as well. And I know that other YouTubers started doing them and they got they got judged real hard, which was really uncalled for, to be honest. Because obviously people consume content like this for free. So we have to make as much money as we can somehow, right? But anyway, so you will see bits and pieces about that, but it'll not be anything I don't think you guys wouldn't enjoy. So anyway, right, I've popped this guy in here and I really hope that he does well, you know, because... I don't really have many of these left. I don't know what happened to them. I think they just got frazzled during the move from the old place to here. Anything that wasn't completely stable on its own just literally died. But that's that anyway, guys. That's my update. Those are several things that are going on. The next video, uh, repot video you get, I won't have any updates for you because it'll be on the back of this one. So I can't update you on any of that. That's just going to be a Q&A. But hopefully in the future, you will get some update on something. And I'm really hoping it's a positive one. I'm really hoping it's a positive one. If I can't get a mortgage, I don't really have a backup plan other than to rent again. And you don't get much for your cash renting. And it's a big shame that the area I'm in at the minute is not a good one for that sort of stuff. So I'm very stressed about it. That is it. That is me. That is my update so far. I'm doing my best to be self-sufficient, stand on my own two feet, have my own home, do all those things in the midst of absolute chaos. Because so far what could have gone wrong has gone wrong and I'm sure it will continue, but I'm always gonna to continue to try and battle against it. And as I mentioned before, I'm taking steps to ensure that I am healthy and I'm quite literally fighting fit. So I can, I can get through this year. There's no other way to put it really. But anyway, thank you very much for watching today's video. I know it's just been Miranda based. I know it's been very, very chatty. I hope that that's okay with everyone. Yeah, I'm going to do some much more fun plants next week. You'll be seeing some, some lovely heart shapes that I can see just over there. I picked out a ton of plants to go up in the studio. I say a ton. There's really like three varieties, but I need to pick like good ones. And I think I'm just going to repeat them round about because I've decided that for the shelves in the studio, the best thing I could do would be to put crawlers on them because those shelves aren't very tall. They're maybe about a foot, maybe a little bit over that. And anything that climbs, it can't be there very long. And that's just when my plants get really neglected. So I figured if I put climbers up there, even if they start to climb down, like honestly, a lot of the stuff that has on this wall, it's still sized up. Do you know what I mean? Even though it's climbing down, it's not quite climbing the way you'd expect it to. They're still doing very well. So with that in mind, I'm going to be doing some crawlers um, next week and we're going to put them in the studio. It's going to be great. And when I do do the studio, I will film the whole thing. I'll show you the current situation. I'll show you the plants I've got and you'll probably see me attempt to organize it. So more on that later on. But anyway, thank you very much for watching this video today, guys. I don't know how long we've gone for. Let me touch my little monitor. Oh, this is a long one, isn't it? <laughs> thank you very much for watching. I hope you really appreciated the living wall update, the section of living wall that I can give for you. It's 
it's absolutely stunning on film and I will do my best to record many more in front of this because that is absolutely beautiful. And truly, if I can't use that for a frame, then what am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? If you like this video, please leave a like down below. It really, really helps me out. It lets me know that I'm doing a good job and I'm making content that you guys enjoy. Also kind of helps me out in the algorithm. Not gonna lie. And if you'd like to see any more of my content, either repot with me, either red plant indexes, either deep dives, either um, ranking plants, shitting on plants, anything you like, then please feel free to check out my channel and hopefully subscribe. Thank you very much for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.